According to the National Fire Protection Association, a fire occurs every 86 seconds in the United States, resulting in $20 billion in property damage, 3,000 civilian fire deaths, and 15,000 civilian fire injuries annually. Hi, I'm Fire Marshal Lock, City of Monroe Fire Department, and in this short clip, we want to give you the knowledge, skills, and abilities to keep you and your loved ones safe in case there's a house fire. Now I have to ask the question, do you have two ways out? Praise God, good afternoon. I'm Pastor Edens of New Garden of Edens Ministry. We're just here to talk with you today about fire safety, uh, early prevention. And I think that's something that seriously needs to be addressed uh, because a lot of times we just wait until an incident happens. Uh, we want to prevent any dangers uh, if we can prevent it at an early state. My main concern to it is as an individual is I, I have one leg, I'm handicapped, I'm partially blind. Um, things don't stop because something happened to us. And I believe uh, a lot of times people of, of handicap or, or, or age-wise we're overlooked. Uh, as opposed to somebody that's physically fit. And I think uh, we need to be educated as a people, uh, handicapped, elderly, physically fit, whatever, what fire can do and its ability, uh, how rapidly a fire can build. And I think it's very important that we be educated on knowing how to prevent uh, a fire from exploding out of the range where we just panic. What we do is we panic. What we need to do is understand that we need to have smoke alarms, make sure they work. They have smoke alarms now with the battery lasts for 10 years. I mean, we need to really get down to the nitty gritty with these type of things. Teach our family, teach our children. Let the house know what's going on. If you're in this room or you're in that room, make sure you turn this off. Make sure you turn the oven off. We need to check behind ourselves. But most important, we need to have a fire alarm and we need to have fire drills in our home like it's second nature. Most modular homes only have two doors leading out. Typically the main exit is off the living room and the secondary exit is off the kitchen. The problem is these two areas generally have the highest potential for a fire to start. Also in this home setting, there may be only one window in the bedroom and that window could be occupied by an AC unit. you're setting up a room, it's, it's important to remember to think about your exits and your ways out. Uh, the last thing you want to do is, is put a, is something in your way, such as a dresser or a TV stand or a, a chest, things of that nature. Keep furniture out of the way. 
we go into a lot of these houses around here and we start noticing that that people are, are piling stuff up everywhere. They've got excessive clutter all over their house and it presents a huge problem to them just because it's going to hinder them getting out safely. When your house is on fire and you can't see anything and you have all this cluttered stuff to get around, you're, gonna, you're having to climb over that stuff and you're tripping on stuff. The other side of that is it is it's a hindrance to us as firefighters because when we come into the house, we have to go through all that stuff as well to either get to you if you get trapped or to get to you and put the fire out. When you look at products that you buy from the store, uh, furniture, uh, uh, tables, the, the way it's designed, soon as fire hit it, it just goes up in, in flames. We're in, we're, your, your house is engulfed with fire before you even know it. So we need to learn and concentrate on learning about safety measures in regards to fire. Excessive clutter in a house presents a, a, a problem with fire load. Uh, things are, are not just made of wood anymore like they were back years ago. They're made of polyesters and plastics and, and, and different types of things that when they burn, uh, they're very toxic. They create a lot more smoke and they burn hotter, and burn faster. Second and third story living arrangements presents the obvious challenge of elevated height. Early planning is imperative to ensure a safe escape in these settings. Plan before something happens. Look at how you can shorten your distance from the ground. If you have to jump, look to see if there is an awning or deck so that you can reduce your distance between you and the ground. Every family must have two ways out, and if your primary means of going down the stairs is jeopardized, you must know another way. The best thing to have ready is an emergency escape ladder. There are many different brands that are inexpensive that will provide the proper means for you and your family to escape safely. Make sure that your ladder has been tested and stamped by a certified testing agency like UL. Everyone in the home must know where it is stored and make sure that it is easy in obtaining access. Practice deploying your escape ladder so that you know the challenges that you can be faced with. Your window configuration and size may make it difficult for you to safely get in the position of exiting the window and climbing down the ladder. Make sure to pay attention to your footing at all times and secure your hands and arms in order to stabilize your descent. You may need to move a piece of furniture in front of the window to give you a platform to position your body and escape properly. One thing people don't think about a lot is people that have young kids or people that can't get outside by themselves like elderly folks or people that are disabled is having them on the same level as the people that are gonna help them. People with young children, put your kids on the same level as you because you're gonna have, ultimately you're gonna be the one that's having to get them out. When you separate those family members and the kids are upstairs and mom and dad are downstairs and there's a fire, those one or two year old kids are not going to be able to get out of the house by themselves. You can teach a 13 or a 14 year old kid to get out of a house, but you can't teach a one or two year old kid to do that. What we need to understand in educating our children and our families as a whole, we need to demonstrate this in front of our children.
we need to take the time out to have a fire drill at home. It might sound simple to you, but the importance of it. Do you think me having a fire drill in my home is worth the safety of my family? You make that decision.